Hmm, what should I do my next video on? I know, I'll do an expose on all the plant life and animal oh. kingdom. Oh. Alright, alright, I'll do Mary Blair. So pushy. Mary Robinson was born in 1911 in Oklahoma and moved to San Jose with her family when she was seven. From a young age, Mary had an affinity for art and received a scholarship for the prestigious Chouinard Art Institute in Los Angeles. It was there that she met Lee Blair and the two were married in 1934. Both Mary and Lee had intentions of becoming fine artists, but after the Depression, work was hard to come by for artists, so they had to turn their attention elsewhere in order to make a living. Back in the 40s, pretty much the only line of work that an artist could get steady employment in was animation, and of course the king of animation was Disney. So if you wanted to make money being an artist, Disney was kind of your best option. Lee Blair began working for the Disney studio in the late 30s, but word quickly began to spread about the town of Lee's wife, particularly her use of colors in her paintings, and it wasn't long before Walt was urged to hire Mary Blair. So in 1940, Disney brought Mary aboard and had her work on preliminary sketches for Dumbo, a follow-up to Fantasia, and a film entitled Lady. Hmm, I feel like I was just talking about a movie called Lady the other day. I wonder where I could find such a video with information like that in it. Hmm. Blair was frustrated working for Disney though and quickly began to be bored with her job. Her problem was that she was continually joining projects that had already been conceptualized and therefore was painting and drawing preconceived characters and designs that multiple people above her had come up with, which was stifling for a person who was so used to creating on her own for as long as Mary was. Blair would actually resign from the Disney studio in June of 1941, but her hiatus from the company was short-lived as she was rehired by Disney in August in order to travel to South America as part of Disney's Goodwill tour. Truth be told, I've actually heard some conflicting stories about how Blair's inclusion in this trip came to be. In some reports, Walt handpicked Mary because he was impressed by her sketches, while in others, Mary pretty much told Walt she was going on this trip with her husband, and Walt agreed. I think that there's grains of truth in both versions, but regardless, the Disney company and we as Disney fans are pretty lucky that Blair came back to the studio as quickly as she did. Blair's trip to South America was incredibly successful in a number of ways. First and foremost, it changed and expanded her art style. At the time, Blair, inspired by her husband, used almost exclusively watercolors, and though her paintings could tell great stories, they tended to use very muted colors and could be classified as moody. While in South America, though, Blair began to experiment with charcoal and was inspired by the various ethnic flavors around her, and as a result, her art started to use more surreal, vibrant colors, which would come to be the most recognized and celebrated aspect of her art. The trip also led to her forming a strong bond with Walt, and was a large reason why he began to trust Blair more and expand her role in the studio upon their return to the States. Really, the trip to South America totally transformed Blair and her role in the company. Once just another artist who was frustrated with the lack of creativity afforded to her, Blair proved to Walt that she could be so much more and became the go-to concept artist for almost every major film through the 50s. Quite the turnaround for someone who had actually quit the company a few months prior. But things weren't always easy for Blair. Being a working woman in the 40s and 50s was tough enough as it was, but the creative art style that Blair had developed as a strength also became a bit of a hindrance for her at the studio. Artists at Disney tended to resist animating Blair's style, mainly because it conflicted with their more realistic European storybook style, and Blair's abstract style was difficult for them to animate. Luckily for Mary, her biggest proponent at the studio was the man himself, Walt Disney, and it was through his urging that touches of Blair's art would appear on screen, or in some cases, like the short Once Upon a Winter Time, made sure that Blair's art inspired the entire project. I get the impression that Walt saw a lot of himself in Mary Blair, and that's why he was such a fan of her and her work, and when you think about it, it does make sense. I mean, Mary had to fight an uphill battle in her profession, much like Walt did, but she fought and persevered and let her talent shine through. And when you have somebody as imaginative as Walt, he must have appreciated Mary's creativity and storytelling, as well as her bright and vibrant colors in her work that made it stand out from everybody else. Blair's biggest and most important work, however, came in the late 40s, when the company began to shift back to full-length animated features. Blair was the lead concept artist and art director for Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan, and her art style and concepts were heavily featured in all of those projects. Honestly, there's almost nothing I can say here to do justice for Mary Blair's work on these films. 
Truly, if you want to appreciate Blair's influence on some of the most iconic films in Disney history, check out her artwork and you'll see concepts, art, and even emotions and stories that ended up being prominently included in these movies. I really wish I could say more about Blair's work during this time, but like the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words, and for me at least, a Mary Blair painting is worth about ten thousand. In 1953, Blair left the studio again, this time to pursue other interests, mainly children's book illustrations, working on ad campaigns, and spending time with their kids. But once again, Mary would be brought back to Disney for one more project. In 1963, the idea for a boat ride at Disneyland showing off the various cultures of the world was proposed, and Walt insisted that Mary Blair be the one who designed the backgrounds for the ride, dubbed It's a Small World. Blair gladly accepted and gave the ride its signature look that has enchanted ride-goers for 50 years and counting. If you've never been on It's a Small World, or even if you have, why don't you get past the incessant singing of that song and really take a look at your surroundings and the settings, it's like being in a living, breathing Mary Blair painting. It's really quite the experience, especially if you're a fan of Blair's work. Blair also created two murals for Disneyland's Tomorrowland Promenade in 1967, and created another mural in 1971, this time for the Contemporary Resort in Orlando's Walt Disney World. Sadly, this would be Blair's final work for Disney, as in 1978, Mary Blair died of a cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 66. Mary Blair only worked for the Disney Company for 13 years, which, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that long a period of time. Yet it truly is a testament to how good and unique her work was that even today, in 2014, Mary Blair is still considered an animation legend and continues to inspire and influence artists both in the Disney studio and beyond. In 1991, Mary Blair was posthumously inducted as a Disney legend, and in 1996, she received the Windsor McKay Award for her contributions to the field of animation. Today, Blair is still recognized as both a pioneer for women in the animation industry and as one of the most unique and influential artists to ever come through the Disney studio. I think that my favorite part about Mary Blair's artwork is that uniqueness, because whenever you see a scene in a Disney movie that was inspired by her work, it's instantly recognizable. Although both Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland have her fingerprints all over them, for me at least, the scene that most screams Mary Blair is the train sequence in Three Caballeros. Something about the colors, the surrealness, and just the general style of it always just epitomize Mary Blair's artwork to me, and it's still the first thing that comes to mind whenever I think about Mary Blair. In a point in history where women were scarce in the animation industry and uniqueness was at a premium, Mary Blair's work shined above all the rest, and truly has stood the test of time. Well guys, that wraps it up for me this week. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts on Mary Blair are, and let me know which influential person you think I should look at next. Also be sure to check out last week's video, a special video next week, and of course if you like this, make sure you check out my other videos on influential people in Disney history. And I'll see you all next week.